All right, this is Jason Cross here again, and I'm going to talk to you about an application called Nearpod today, and it is a web-based application that also has um, separate apps for different devices, and we're going to look at it specifically for use in assessment, in classroom assessment. You, um, If you're familiar with Nearpod at all, you'll know that it's a lot more powerful than that. It does a lot of different things. In this specific module, however, we're only going to cover it for assessment purposes. So if you like what Nearpod does, you might want to go out there and, and seek some more information on the general use of, of the software. But we're going to cover one thing. So we've got three screens up in front of us. We have two iPads which are going to represent the students and what they see. And then we also have the uh, web page, which is what we're going to use to set up our quizzes. And you can kind of see how it's uh, it's almost like a presenter mode. And then you have the students that are receiving um, the presentation on their iPads, which is um, it's, it's very neat. I think it's a pretty neat feature. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. So we have um, on the main page here a thing where we can find stuff in our library. We can find um, stuff from a store, so they do have a store, and it's important to note that Nearpod is not 100% free. There are parts of it that do cost money, so if you want to be a more advanced user and use some of the advanced features, there is a fee, but it is broken down into individual and even all the way up to district level fees, so it might be something that your entire school wants to um, purchase. There's a join and a create. Um, join means that you'd like to just use the web feature to join a session. Create is what we're going to work out of to start with, which is where we're going to actually create a, um, a presentation. And inside that presentation, we're going to embed a couple projects that we're going to ask our students to complete for us. And then it's got a robust reporting feature, which is going to uh, be where you can get some results back, do some grading, different things like that. So let's go ahead and jump right in, and we're going to create um, a presentation. All of your presentations you've created will show up um, in in uh, this area here and then there's a button right here to create a new presentation and that's really how easy it is we're gonna go ahead and jump right in and this is an untitled presentation and you'll notice that it has two current slides so it has welcome to Nearpod and thank you so those are just slides that it defaults for you you could um, change those, do things with those if you want. Um, but then it gives you the option to add here. And now you're not adding a whole new presentation. You're actually just adding a new slide to your presentation. So think of it a lot like PowerPoint or Keynote. You're adding essentially slides. And then these slides are going to be controlled by the teacher um, as the presentation goes live. So let's look at a slide here. When I click on it, I can add content. Now, adding content will be a, a PDF. It'll be an image. There's video content that you can add. So you could throw up a, a video from maybe something you've created or something one of the students has created. Audio, you can just add a recorded piece of audio to your slideshow. Um, you can actually add a slideshow. So you can take something that's already been made and just toss it right into there. And you can do, um, you know, as we said, PDF viewer, which um, is very handy, especially if you've done some scanning maybe of worksheets, things like that. All right. Then there's this add web content feature. This is a really neat feature of Nearpod. I'm not going to cover it too much, but I just want you to know it is um, something that you do have to pay for. It's free on a kind of a trial basis to give it a try, but it will allow you to add a web page to your presentation. And what's neat is when you... Um, are presenting to the students, the students will see the web page right on their screens and it will populate all of their screens to the same web page. It's a very big classroom management uh, feature that you might enjoy. And then there's this one, Add Activity, and this is what we're going to spend most of our time in um, for this course, and that is um, an activity can be an open-ended question, a poll, a quiz, or a drawing. And the drawing is really neat because a lot of the other tools that we've covered in our assessment, our digital assessment class, are the basic multiple choice short answer quiz type things but this one being able to have a drawing added to it is is really kind of neat so we're going to add a couple different types of questions so first we're going to start with a quiz and it's just as you might expect it's going to ask me for a quiz question title it's going to ask me to enter the question and then it's going to ask me to enter the answers and pick the correct answer so i'm going to fill in that information real quick 
All right, so I've answered some que- or put some question text in uh, a couple different questions here. So I have uh, my first question about how many phases of the moon are there. Then I added another question. And if I wanted to add a third question, I would click on that button right there and I could add as many questions as I want. So I'm going to go ahead and save. Now, what that has done is it has added a, a quiz as a slide into my presentation. So now I have the intro slide, the quiz, and the completion slide. So let's add another question here. Let's add, um, or activity rather, let's add a drawing and see what that looks like. And then we're gonna actually uh, use this presentation. So uh, draw it. So we're gonna call this phases of the moon and we're going to um, drag an image right here. So I have a, a worksheet that I would like the students to draw on and they're going to draw these phases of the moon. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And now I have a drawing question essentially that has been added to my, um, my presentation. So I've got welcome, quiz, drawing, and I'm done. All right, once I've completed all of this, I'm going to publish it. Now publishing it does not mean that it goes out on the web. Um, pub what publishing really does is it puts it into your library of different things, but it makes it available to be used. If it's not published, it's still in a um, kind of a pre-built format. So you have to publish it, then you're going to um, present it. So let's call this phases of the moon. And we're gonna say that it's second grade and it is uh, science. And so it's gonna now say, publish this presentation. Are you sure you wanna publish this presentation? Once published, it will show up in your private library. We're gonna say yes, notice it said private library. All right, so I'm all good there. Now I have um, my many phases of the moon presentation um, that's ready to go. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our, our home page. And once we get back to our home page, it's going to uh, give us the same options that we discussed at the beginning here. But what we can do now is go to my library and we can view all of our different presentations. So if you set this up correctly, you would have all of your presentations maybe for your entire day, for your all your different classes just waiting for you here in your library. And then when you select on one, it's really ready to go and it's like PowerPoint. So this presentation as it, after it loads is going to um, be ready to be given to your students. And it's as simple as just sliding through the um, different activities to show it to them. But what's interesting about this and what's so cool is that there's a live session option down here at the very, very bottom. And this is gonna impact these iPads that I have here. So when I click live session, I'm going to get a code. And this is pretty familiar stuff if you've ever used Edmodo or uh, Kahoot or any of these, that they all have a code that you're gonna enter. And over here, we're gonna enter that pin into the iPads. So let's do that. All right, so I have entered the pins and I'm gonna say done and done. And you can see my iPads over here are starting to connect and you would leave this up on screen until um, you see everybody's presentation is loading. And you'll notice over here that it actually was downloading content directly to the iPods, or iPad, so it's, it's pulling some information off, getting this all ready to go. Once I feel like my audience has my presentation, I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And then I'm ready to begin my presentation and it's in a full screen presentation mode. So just like Hoot, if you have uh, watched those videos, this is something you would put up on the board and you would operate it via your computer. And first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna ask for all the students' names so that you can kind of give them an ID. And when I switch slides, notice that it actually switched my uh, login screen on for the students automatically. So I was controlling the web page, but it was controlling the iPads. Very cool feature. So I'm gonna enter some names. So this will be John, and this will be Sally. And there we go. And you'll see these names are going to change with those inputs. So 
you can kind of see the interaction here between the iPads and the web page. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and click onto the next um, part, and here we go. It says Phases of the Moon, and now it's asking the students, are they ready to take a quiz? And the students have the option to say go, and we're going to go ahead and select go. Once they click go, they are going to be asked questions, and so these are all of the different questions that I put into that quiz, which is only two but I put some questions in that quiz. They're going to now take the quiz. And in this case, they're taking it at their own pace. So they can move on to the next question after they get it done. So we'll go ahead and we'll have them answer those questions. And let's see here. There we go. And so it says tap next to submit your final answers or back to review your answers. So it gives them a chance to uh, look at it. So we're going to say next and next. It's going to say thank you. And now as a teacher, you are going to see these scores populate live and in real time. And you can see how many people got which questions correct or how they've done on their um, test. And it gives you a lot of great data just on the fly. Now, this is probably not something you want up on the board as they're taking the quiz. So you may want to uh, turn your projector off or do something like that. Um, so keep in mind that um, it does kind of show this to the whole class and they kind of see the answers and you know how that all works. All right, so let's go ahead and go to our next slide. Now this is really kind of a fun thing. Um, now it's going to ask for drawings. And you can see on our iPads here, it's in a drawing mode and the image that I drug over to the worksheet is just waiting for them to be drawn on. And so they can grab the tool, they can grab different colors, they can now draw on, and I'm doing a really bad job, I apologize, but they can draw on their um, worksheets like so. And I know I'm getting these answers wrong, but I'm just drawing on it. And now they can hit send. It's going to make sure that they're ready to send it. And once they hit send, it is going to, again, upload it to the server. This web page is now going to see the results of our work um, in real time. And so as a teacher, you can watch these drawings come in, and you'd be able to click on them and see what they have um, just drawn for you it, practically in real time. Um, now this is accessible later, so I'm going to show you one last thing where we go back and look at some data, and, and you can get to these to grade them later, but if you're currently in this, um, in this screen, you can view them here for a short time. So if you were uh, maybe giving the quiz and it was kind of quiet in the classroom, you could probably grade this stuff without um, going into the um, other section that I'm going to show you in just a minute. All right, once we're done, we can go to the last screen and notice that it's going to flip it over and it's going to say thank you. And we are all completed with our quiz. All right, so let's go ahead and now we're going to look at, so we're going to go back to the um, home page. Now it's going to always ask you, it's going to say, hey, do you want to leave this presentation? You can go back to it later. Yes, we want to leave it. Let's go back to the home and let's look at reports. So the reports are where we're going to get a lot of great feedback on how our students did on the quiz. So here's our many phases of the moon. It was taken today and we're going to open it and we've got all sorts of great information. So here is how John and Sally did. This is the score they got. This is um, their participation in the draw activity. You can see the quiz questions. So you can get some data specifically about that. You can get specific um, data about the answer. So 50% got it right, 50% got it wrong. So again, great data on whether or not your students as a whole were able to understand a question. So as a teacher, if you were to look at this and see that everybody got it wrong or some people didn't get an answer, you'll know this was maybe a question that needed a little more talking um, on. Uh, the poll, if we did a poll, would be there. Open-ended, same thing. We would have some summaries of questions. And then we have draw it. And when we click on draw it, these are the drawings. I personally think this makes grading a snap because if you've taken home 50 papers from 
um, students that they, they drew on, you know what a mess that is and how hard it is to keep track of all of that stuff. Well, now you can click on draw it. You can click on the question. You can open up the question. You can see what they've done. You could go ahead and put that grade in the grade book and you would have it all completed without any kind of mess. You would just need your, your computer to do that, your, your web browser. All right, so that concludes this uh, quick training um, class on using Nearpod for assessments. Um, again, Nearpod goes much, much further than this, but I think this will get you going on another great assessment tool for your classroom.